The natural world is a vital source of inspiration. Viewing the natural world helps us develop perspectives in two contrasting ways. In one way, by viewing nature, we view something new and distant from our particularly human lives. Viewing how animals, birds, and botany exist and develop allows us to distance ourselves from human concerns. This is what I call the wider view. A wider view of nature can inspire us to reckon with things that reckon with us, things that mean a lot to us, yet things that feel small in a larger scheme of life on earth. We can ask, how does my problem matter when some trees have existed for 4,000 years? In another way, in viewing nature, we view something in kinship with us. We exist as part of the natural world, different in some ways, yet with great similarities. We coexist. This is what I call the connected view. A connected view can inspire us to reckon with things that reckon with us by reviewing how other species and animals survive. We see similarities, like a resilient plant that connects us to someone else's resilience. Let's explore some exercises that deal with both the wider and connected views. To complete these exercises, you can visit a park or your backyard. You can also research images or videos of the natural world for inspiration. Exercise one, write directly about a plant, animal, or landscape in front of you with little to no poetic description. A rose can evoke a great deal of poetic language, but a rose is also a rose. To take the wider view, natural things have their own reasons for existing, their own place, and as we keep discovering, their own cognition and consciousness. The image or the plain description of an organism is enough to represent its existence. So if you have a rose in front of you, write a description of what you see without similes, metaphors, or comparisons. Just the rose as is. Number two, looking at a plant, wildlife, or landscape, write what it makes you think about. Let's try a connected view exercise. If we're looking at a mountain landscape, write about something in your daily life this visual inspires us to think about. We're not explicitly writing about the natural elements or organisms in this image. We're writing about what it triggers us to think about in our lives. Consider this exercise a free association exercise. For this exercise, write the first thoughts a visual of the natural world prompts in you. And last, write an ode or a paragraph celebrating an organism you hate. I bet many of you strongly dislike, hate, or get the creepies from seeing a spider or a snake. How many of you yelp when you see a cockroach or a mouse scampering in your house? Let's try to combine the wider and connected views. Decide what organism you hate or dislike and write something imaginative to celebrate its existence. We take a wider view in this exercise to celebrate a creature that exists regardless of our own. We can take a connected view if we connect the organism to us and our experiences. To wrap up, remember that in writing about the natural world, we can engage in something we're a part of. We humans are animals and a part of the natural world too.